This is episode 6 of the Foley and James podcast, and this week we are going to be following on from what we were talking about last week, talking about some of the jobs that one can do at a uh, summer camp in the USA, and then we're going to move on to the exciting stuff that formed some of the biggest highlights of our whole time traveling, and those were the excursions. If you missed part one of the uh, summer camp series, then stop this podcast right now, go find the first part, and come back to this one when you're ready. But some of the kids as well. You know, yes. some of the kids really are just amazing kids. <laughs> there was, there's always, I don't great. know about you, but I found that there was every week there was always one kid who would sort of like not be your favorite, but he'd be the one that you sort of thought, oh, he's, he's a good guy, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, stand out. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And there was one, one. That, but, it, but it was kind of the other, it was the other way around a, a little bit with the kids, so you know. 80% of them weren't exactly <laughs> oh, phenomenal people. Well, the thing I found that I di- almost didn't like, and this has nothing to do with the camp itself, like the camp was fantastic what it provided the kids, and I'm, I'm not having anything against the summer camp. Um, it was that some of the kids obviously didn't want to be there, you know, and it wasn't because of the mm-hmm. camp, it was because their parents just, I don't know if their parents had plans or if they just didn't want them in the house or what, what, what it was, but there were some kids that just didn't want to be there and for that reason, didn't want to take part and would either uh, either just flat out refuse to take part or would actively uh, like spoil the time of the other campers. And that was what was tough. You know, that's what I found really tough about it sometimes. Yeah, oh, big time, big time. Like it's, it's, it's not a way of saying that they're spoiled kids, that they're doing this. Some of them no. just don't want to be forced to play soccer for a week or yeah. something like that i mean if you don't like you know? something you don't like something and it's horrible to be for it's like if uh, i mean you hear the, the common stereotype of like a kid being forced to play the piano when he just hates music or what do you know what i mean mm-hmm. is that it's a similar sort of thing and there was there it's this is not the majority but there were some kids there who clearly didn't want to be there and it was a shame and it did it, it was uh it you know it, it made they didn't have fun and it made it a little bit harder on everyone else too. And so that's a shame. That is the sort of downside of it. But as I said, there are there are always kids that are just awesome. And there's one that I remember particularly. He was just... It's really harsh, but it will always make me laugh. And he, like, loved me at the end of it anyway. And it was just... He was a lacrosse player. Well, he was a goalie in lacrosse. And... Uh, okay, I think I remember who you're talking this? about. <laughs> And his mom had, for like, Brent, he, oh, this is one of the kids who wanted to be there. He loved lacrosse. And, and he, his mom had bought him for camp, like, a brand new cup <laughs> to you. That was his sort of new thing. <laughs> and, um, yeah, man, as a goalie, like, lacrosse isn't that huge in, in, in Europe, or at least in England. And so this men's lacrosse, anyway, is physical. Like, they've got these metal, mm-hmm. metal sticks. Or what do you call them? What's the full name for lacrosse? Is it a stick? I think so. Yeah, they've got <laughs> they've got a uh, they've got their lacrosse sticks. They're made of metal, and you can legally hit the other people with the pole, like with the metal pole. And the ball is really solid, and the the speed at which they they fire the they shoot the ball like is really really fast. And yeah. they don't wear that much padding. They have shoulder pads because it's like they kind of body check each other and stuff. Um, and the goalie has a full face helmet. Uh, they have. I think they've they've flak jacket-esque type things you know they, right. do, they do have some protection on their ribs they do it's but it's not the level move. of like ice hockey say so. oh god no no no, no. <laughs> and they do have um, in fairness they do have like forearm uh some of them wear forearm protection and then all of them have to wear gloves and help right exactly yeah um, like if you're trying to hit the other person's stick like you know legally you're trying to hit the other person's stick mm. if you miss it all you're hitting someone's hand and you get one of them on the knuckle that's gonna hurt really again. hurts. Yeah, that'll break your knuckle, absolutely. Um, but then this kid was the goalie, so he's getting these rock solid like lacrosse balls being flung at him from all angles, and he took one to the nuts, <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and like his cup did nothing. It offered zero protection, <laughs> and he went down like a bag, like a like yeah, like a pack of shit, you know, like a bag of shit, and <laughs> and I just got I got this. Uh, I was on the golf buggy doing the water rounds and I got this message from the nurses saying, yeah, you need to go over to the cross field and bring an injured kid over. And like, I, it was so, so funny just watching him <laughs> waddle over. 
Like, because when you've been hitting the nuts, it's hard to walk, right? And so he was waddling over with his hands down his pants, and but he wasn't crying. Like he was, he was just a bit embarrassed. I think. Like I think the initial shock had yeah. worn off, but it was so funny. And like I looked after him, I took him to the nurse's station, and uh, he was really, he was really uh, afraid that he wouldn't be able to continue playing, like that we wouldn't allow him to. Wow. And so <laughs> and. We were like, hey, if you're all right, you know, if you feel okay, you can go back and play tonight, uh, this afternoon, sort of thing. And um, mm. just, you know, we got to, you got to make sure you get a new cup for tomorrow because that's not going <laughs> to work for you. And it, like, for the next couple of days, so he went back and played. Like this kid was awesome. He was a fighter. But for the next couple of days, whenever he wasn't on the lacrosse field, you could see him walking around the campus holding a bag of ice to his nuts. It was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> It was so funny. And he was like, I don't know, uh, like 14 years old, this kid, and I'm just taking the piss out of him. It was so funny. Of course. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. yeah no, that, that's, that's a good way of having it. <laughs> hey, but we've... So I mentioned there about nurses, and, like, so we, we had mm. counsellors, office staff, coaches, nurses. There were athletic trainers. What was the difference? Yes. What's the difference yeah, so the athletic... So a nurse is a nurse. Um, <laughs> uh, it's fairly straightforward in this sense. Um, she deals with all the medication... You know, some kids oh, need medication three, four times a day. So she deals with all of that. The athletic trainers are what we'd know as physio, physios or... Uh, phys, phys, yeah, I guess physios would be the easiest way to describe it. Um, those people that are at the sport all the time. You know, they're there. They'll, they essentially, I guess, apply the first aid. That first level of dealing with an injury yeah. if someone is injured. You know, and these, these are mostly their... I guess going into their final year or just finished their final year in college university of doing this course. So they're well-trained people mm. and to get this kind of experience, you know, in my opinion, it's good for them. Yeah. It's a win-win. Isn't it? It's <clears> a <throat> win-win situation. Yeah. Often, often a lot of them are working with their own, um, college teams and or other teams anyways and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, so that, that's what the athletic trainers do. And they, <clears throat> they always have to be up early you know, they were the first line of duty, as I said, with regards to injuries, but they're always also the first line of duty with regards to water for all the different fields and stuff. You know, they're always in charge of that. Um, you'd have a head, head athletic trainer each year and they do like the schedule. OK, you're going to soccer this week and then you can go to um, tennis next week and then you can be indoor in the nice cool arena at volleyball the next week. <laughs> Something like yeah. that. Yeah, it was varied, oh, really so. varied. We should also mention that uh, the coaches all uh, as well are often so not for me and you because we're not we're not living in America normally. But as you mentioned, that a lot of them are uh, students at colleges across the states, and they're all also competing for their colleges and usually at top levels. Like the lacrosse coaches were well, the the head the head coach was a professional or an ex professional, mm -hmm. and then the the rest of the coaches were all. Um, yeah, competing at the college level in the states, and I believe that yeah. was pretty much the case across the board. Like there were, there was golf pros, there were basketball pros, um, there was there was an ex NFL player leading the American football. Yeah. Like there was really good tuition coming in there, you know. Yeah, big time, big time. Um, and yeah, as you said, like a lot of them were still playing or just finished playing in college. Yeah, and um, this is a way for them to make money while doing something that they've always done in in a sense. Yeah. Were there any other jobs that were uh, that were there? Have we covered everything? I mean, what else was there? There was a few. A few. There was one or two of the counselors who actually taught the ESL classes. That's right. Did we mention that some of our some of our like you mentioned there was a language camp, but like we also offered mm. tuition to our folks. Yeah. So students. yeah, we we did as well at, at our camp, and um, so yeah, as I said, some of the counselors would do that. Um, but what they do is they do the language in the morning. And then do sports in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, which um was quite cool. Like I remember, I had one uh, goalkeeper and phenomenal goalkeeper, but his English was shocking. <laughs> <laughs> you know? you'd have to show him, you'd have to show him as opposed to just explaining the drill. Which don't get me wrong, it's a better way of doing it anyway. But uh, yeah, his English was so bad, and it's you can't like you can't tell him to like concentrate on something because he just might not understand you. <laughs> Where was he from? Was that, was that the Spanish guy? Uh, no, Brazilian. Brazilian guy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was lucky in that sense last year um, or two years ago now that I had such a good group every week of uh, goalkeepers. You know, a couple of them came back for second weeks because they enjoyed it so much. 
which is great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's really nice. No, it's fantastic because, I mean, the the parents are investing a lot of money into the, these things aren't cheap. I don't know how about other camps, like I say, but these, these ones are not cheap. And, uh, you know, for the kid to be booked up for one week and go back with such a like a positive review and say so had so much fun that the parents are going to fork out the cash again for another week that, you know, that shows that it, a lot, a lot of these kids really love it, you know, and that, 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 mm-hmm. that they, they feel like, and that the parents feel like the level of tuition with the, the type of coaches they have, you know, that it's really worth, except for you, obviously you're shit, but as far as the professionals <laughs> uh, that they have, like it's really worthwhile for them. So it's really cool. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. Um, so yeah, now apart from that kind of thing that we've mentioned it a couple of times, I guess we should, uh, we should go on to it now is the, the evening excursions and the evening trips. Yeah. So when, you know, that was after we'd, we finished sports for the day, we'd go to dinner and then the way this camp ran it, they would all line up outside the main housing building, uh, and yeah, take it from there. What happens next? Yeah, so um, six o'clock normally we'd have an evening meeting with everyone. Same things that that happened in the morning. We didn't really kind of go through that. Everyone would meet at approximately eight fifteen. Um, the owner of the camp or someone, if there was any announcements to be made, would make the announcements. But everyone meets there, lines up for their sports, and then goes off to their sports. That happens again after lunch. Exact same thing. Meet up for your sports. Any announcements? There normally wasn't any at lunchtime. Then you go off to your sports, and at six o'clock every evening. We'd have a meeting. Every it was mandatory, you know. Everyone had to go there, staff, campers, everything. But part of the reason for this was that we sent people off to evening activities, and then at least once you did that, assuming everyone was at on the grass, um, you'd find out who's left and how many people are left. Like, and then you'd be able to organize other things, like who wants to go play basketball for an hour or mm. those kind of things. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so yeah. So there was. Two Monday and Thursday evenings, there was uh, certain uh, activities all the time. Monday was a trip to the grocery store, which was a great way of doing it. You know, um, I was uh, on them often. <laughs> and uh, for us as well, it was great, yes. you know, because we got to go to the grocery store without having to miss out time anywhere else. Again, it was, a, it, um, was a speci- it was like one time out of the week where you could get out of that bubble, you know, with the as far as the food was fantastic, but it was buffet food every single day and after you know it was rotated each week and it was the same food sort of on a monday would be the same yeah. food every time and so this was a nice way of getting out of the bubble uh for us too and just going and getting some some stuff mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and don't like whoever you know um don't get us wrong it's not like we're going an hour away no no no, <laughs> no, no. grocery stores around the corner yeah. really 10 minute drive at most and um, so that was every monday and a lot of the kids would go and you know, they'd get whatever they want. A lot of the kids. I think it was like 200 kids one time. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty like, much. we had to, we had to um, uh, uh, relay it in buses of 50, and that's still, you know, and then there was like four counsellors per bus, so that's sort of, mm-hmm. we're still unleashing 50 under 18-year-olds upon this one supermarket, which uh, yeah. was great business. Now, they were prepared. It, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, they were prepared, mm-hmm. but it's, you know. Most of the time. Uh, yeah, it's pretty hectic. Yeah. I feel exactly. sorry for the so, regular um, customers there, you know. Yeah, and there was a few of them that had arrived down, and I remember meeting the one guy two weeks in a row, and the second week, he was just like, oh, bollocks, not again. <laughs> <laughs> and I just looked at him kind of going, yeah, it's going to be the same for the next few weeks as well, and he just goes, okay, I needed to know that. Yeah, no, absolutely, that's good, yeah. that's good. So go on, what else yeah, was that? that? Was, that was one of them, and then on the Thursday, um, there was a dance party. <laughs> where our director most m- most weeks our director was the DJ yeah, and the dance it. party was he loved it man exactly like he, that he, he he thought he was Pitbull didn't he let's be honest you know he thought he was uh, he, he thought he was the best DJ he wasn't a bad DJ no. but he was funny how much like he thought he was Tiesto and all this sort of stuff it was, it was a lot of fun but the kids loved it they did no, no it was a lot of fun the kids loved it it was a lot of fun in fairness um, he knows how to he knows what to do for the kids to enjoy it. Absolutely. And they really, really enjoyed it. Again, we no, it, have to be it in... wasn't for our benefit. It's absolutely for the kids, of exactly. course. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we were... Um, yeah, we, we had to be inside kind of supervising and, and all of that kind of stuff. And I felt so bad about that, man. Like, that it, one of the rules was, uh, 
you know, the kids, the, the, they're not allowed to sort of couple off and start making out or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, that's because exactly. I think the motto of the overall director was he's not going to have any camp babies sort of thing, you know? Yeah, pretty much. And uh, so pretty if much. we saw any campers sort of getting together, we'd have to actually physically separate them, you know, pull their mouths apart. And it was, I felt so bad, like, because I just can't imagine anything worse sort of thing. And I remember before yeah. the first, uh, on the first Thursday before the disco, I like called my floor uh of of campers they were all boys uh all to the sort of living room and i just said guys i'm really sorry for about what for for what's about to happen but like it's nothing personal like we've just been told we have to do this but i just like i apologize in in advance because yeah it was it was sucked man it was not fun and like they would look at you they would look at you like like I don't know, like you just taken their favorite toy away from them. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's a hilarious way to actually put it. <laughs> when you think about teenage boys. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that was every Thursday, and um, uh, every then the Tuesdays and Wednesdays <clears throat> were some of the kind of the more impressive trips for the most part i want to say so like going to, um, to blue man group and that sort of stuff yeah because so sunday would be check-in days for people so there'd be no activities outside of campus for people there'd be a lot of ice breaking activities and, and stuff like that we'd have an introduction introduce the whole coaching counselor staff ats and the nurse and all of that staff and then you know you go over the rules and all of this kind of stuff which most of the kids would end up trying to ignore anyway yeah but then friday uh, evening was checkout day. Friday mm-hmm. afternoon was checkout day for a lot of kids. So while there was still sports going on, because you know some kids wouldn't, they might not have flights until Saturday or late Friday night, or they might be staying over the weekend and and stuff like that. So you know, but the Friday evening activities were normally a little bit more low key. Yes. So the the Tuesday and Wednesday ones were kind of the ones that you'd almost look to immediately. You knew what was going on on Monday. You knew what was going on on Thursday. Tuesday and Wednesday ones included, as you mentioned, Blue Man Group. There was a couple of trips to see the Red Sox at Fenway Park. That's the baseball team, <clears> yeah. for those that yeah, don't know. Um, there was the, the paintballing, you know, yep. uh, stuff like that. There was uh, duck tours a couple of the evenings. Which I love that. You don't know I love that, mate. Yeah. That's one of the more sort of benign <laughs> ones. But that was uh, mm. that's that in downtown Boston. I'll let you I'm go like, through it then. Yeah, sorry, dude. No, man, I was just... No, there you go. I really enjoyed that one. It was uh, yeah. just a tour of the city in an amphibious car. Or I say amphibious car, a boat with wheels, because it just looks like a boat. <laughs> it's not really a car. Well, it was an old World War II vehicle or something. You That's know, right. And, like, <clears throat> I have a funny feeling Boston was the first city that did it with the duck tours. But I know now, I think Dublin has them, London has them, Paris has them. I'm sure there's a few other cities that have yeah. similar tours. I forgot they yeah, were old so military was... vehicles, but yeah, that was great. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just, I just love. No, that. no, 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 no. Well, like I was going to explain it, but I, I heard the enjoyment, <laughs> excitement in your voice. So. Well, all right. In that case, um, let me explain Blue Man Group because I'm just as uh, thrilled about that as well. Like, that's fair. I love that. It's well. so good. It's so so good. If if you haven't seen it but have heard of it, just go because they they're now in Europe as well. Like then it's not the same all three right, guys. Yeah that go around they're sort of they're based in various cities across the US and there's now one in Berlin I know for sure I don't know about other places um but it's just I mean how do you describe it if you if someone had never heard of Blue Man Group what would you do to describe it because it's such a weird mix of things like it's just um there's no there's no speaking throughout the whole thing right there's there's three guys on stage all dressed in black clothing but with heavy blue makeup on their hands, neck, and face. Yeah. That's all you can see. Yeah. Um, a lot of kind of a lot of percussion music, I guess, and paint everywhere, and hilarity, and yeah, it's really hard to explain. Like if if you're listening to this, you're already on YouTube, um, or if you're listening to this in the future, then uh, great, uh, you're on a podcast app. But <laughs> go on to YouTube. And just look up Blue Man Group if you don't know what it is. It's so worth seeing. Yeah, the entertainment of it is it's so good. It's so so good. We can't do it justice because we can't explain it, but it's it's so good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but um yeah, so some of the other trips, you know, there was a thing called Games to You that would come to the campus and set up. So there was a uh, laser tag outdoors. There was dodgeball with like little sandbags, which was like. 
the AI were supposed to be snot because they were held in a big closet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, there was a games truck, so there was PlayStation, Xbox, stuff like that. Uh, Battleground Z was uh, BB gun shooting, so pellet guns. Mm. I don't know if you ever went to that. I didn't go on that one, though. Did you? Okay. The, I did a couple of times. And like, sir, if you got hit with one properly, it hurt. Like, <laughs> you'd draw blood. <laughs> Jesus. I remember after paintballing, a load of kids came back with the bruises as well, of course. Oh, yeah. Massively. Massively. Um, there was... It, it was going on at a time. So, the, uh, on the 4th of July, there'd be celebrations. You know, it might be a big barbecue campus activities and, and stuff like that. That's right. Didn't they hire uh, a big cinema or screen? Or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was, I don't think that was the fourth. That was a different day. No, never mind. But, um, but yeah, <clears throat> that kind of stuff. And then uh, going in, there might be going out for food. So as opposed to just having the food in the cafeterias, there'd be going to a place called Dick's Last Resort, for, for example. <laughs> Which uh, Did you ever go to Dick's? <laughs> <laughs> no, I went, I went to Charlie Horse. Okay, so Charlie Horse is quite good. Do you want to explain that? Charlie Horse is um, just a... Well, yeah, so it's just food. Like, it's just a restaurant where they do food, chicken strips, burgers, whatever, like pub food. Um, but it's also an arcade. So, you know, like, either old games machines like Time Crisis and Gran Turismo and all that sort of stuff, but it's also, like, the classic arcade, American arcade games. Like, uh, like uh, what's that one where you roll the ball? Up? Ski ball. What? Ski ball? Ski ball, Ski ball. Think, yeah. and then obviously like basketball like things. It's and you, you get tickets if you win and all that sort of stuff. So it's just a good good fun activities after you eat some food. What was Dick's Last Resort? <laughs> uh, Dick's Last Resort. It was a restaurant in Boston, and it was a place where the waiters and waits the the wait, the wait staff is is rude to you, deliberately rude to you. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> so the premise is like the premise is like it's a last resort. Oh no, we have to go here. And you walk in, and I walked in one day, one of the years. 2012 when I was working there and I was just looking for the bathroom and I walked in and I was like um, sorry is the, do you have a bathroom and he's like yeah it's right there you idiot <laughs> <laughs> you know but that's just the way they're told to act <laughs> so, do they get your you like, know, as part of that do they get your order wrong or anything like that or no no you never they'll never get an order wrong but what they might do is just like drop it in front of you <laughs> a few fries will fall off the plate and stuff like that yeah um, <clears throat> but this this is right down in downtown Boston as well um, beside Faneuil Hall where I did work for 12 weeks selling souvenirs. <laughs> oh, there. Story, okay, I guess. yeah. <clears throat> um, and there was Hard Rock Cafe. You'd well. always get a Hard Rock Cafe, another one of the trips. Um, obviously, famous Hard Rock Cafe. Mm. If you don't know that, look it up. It's, you should know that. <laughs> um, and then, I'm trying to think what else there was. They'd be kind of the main ones during the weeks. Yeah, during the weeks, I believe know, so. Um, and it... Obviously, like the Red Sox games would be huge. We rarely had any spare tickets for that. No. I think we usually had about 90 tickets, which is a lot, and they would be sold out mm-hmm. straight away. They would get booked yeah. out straight away. And like, and you'd have the staff as well clamoring to go to these games. I was just going to say, like, for me, I remember you were working in the office by that time, and so you, were, like, you knew that this was an amazing experience, and that for me as a sports you know, fanatic, that it was going to be a big experience. And I remember you sort of pulled a few strings to make sure I got on that trip as well. So, like, <laughs> that's the cool thing about these camps is although they're not for you, they're for the kids and you're there for the kids, the excursions you get to do for free, like, they're, they're so cool. You really do get to enjoy them. Obviously, you have to keep an eye on the yeah. kids. Yeah, that, that, that that's the thing. First and foremost, you're there for the kids. But at the same time, if you're supervising the kids sitting on the end seat in a row... Yes, getting to watch the Boston Red Sox or something like that. Yes. And I remember the game I went to. Okay, like, I have, I know nothing about baseball, so it didn't mean as much to me, but it was still a really cool thing to see. But the game I went to, they happened to be inducting one of their plays into the hall of, into their Hall of Fame. Yes, and I was at that one as well. You were there? and uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, and uh, that was just a really cool experience that obviously doesn't happen every time. And so you no. don't always get to see that. No, no, that was um, that was really cool. Um, yeah was, so there was also was was the um, going to see the, the the New England Revolution was that an evening activity? well I was just about to say so that was that was pretty much the most of the the in week ones and then Fridays and Saturdays we'd have um, activities as well so the Fridays might be just a trip to the movies because there'd be less a lot mm-hmm. less people or you know you might go to the mall and go shopping or to the outlets and go That's shopping right. Um, <clears throat> go to Boston. You could go bowling. Bowling was actually a lot of fun. You know, it I, it sounds like oh, bowling, 
but the place where they went bowling was a really nice place. If you if you wanted, you could like jump into a kids group, and you know if there's a few of the kids you enjoyed, you would hang out with them for the evening. You go bowling, or sometimes there was a spare lane free where all of the staff could bowl. Mm-hmm. Again, don't get me wrong, while keeping an eye on the kids. Obviously. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. and, and we we to... never we never drank on these excursions. It wasn't like that at all. We were there no. for the kids. Well, you, you it was it was a dry camp. Like you weren't. Yeah, exactly. It was a dry camp. It was, you know, for the uh, as we mentioned, you're working until midnight. We have a team meeting every day at eleven p.m. So we're working till about midnight every day. Uh, people have to stay on campus because there are kids there. You while they're asleep, you have to be there in case there's a problem. Um, you had there were some counselors or staff that would be allowed uh, you know you have to sort of arrange that you'd be off campus so that you could go out and and have a and that, that was only on a friday night and that like, was only on there, a was friday. No, there was no other night because friday night <laughs> you had to uh, as you said you had to arrange you had to essentially ask could you leave campus <laughs> and then you know the question would be asked back to you it's like well is there enough people covering you you know in case something goes wrong while you're off campus and all of this and it's like Yes, I got that sorted. Okay, how are you going to be in the morning? I'm going to be absolutely fine. I'm on the yeah. morning activity. That can, like it was as we've said many times, it was for the kids. First we were lucky if we got to go do that. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> so as well as those kind of activities on the Friday, the Saturday ones were often big activities. Yeah. So um, there might be a shopping day in downtown Boston. <laughs> which means you can go to like Newbury Street, where there's all the like, really high-end stores, fancy stores, or you could send the day downtown Boston. And depending on as a counselor, so if you had six or seven kids who are all friends and they're like, oh, we want to go to the north end of Boston, they're like, okay, we can go, but we have to be back here at this time. Yeah. And you'd be with the kids the whole time. Yeah. You know, it's not a case if you're not going to let them off in Boston on their own. <laughs> <laughs> you um, said, mate, I mean, let's say, I'm going to say this now. I don't know. Maybe I'll have to delete it later if it's a legal problem. I didn't know that the first time I did that. And I was just, I guess I was lucky and had a good b- bunch of kids because I did exactly that. I was like, I had like three guys and three girls. The girls wanted to go into like, I don't know, makeup and clothes shops and stuff. And the guys obviously didn't. And, yeah, that's uh, that's a, that's an, uh, an annoying thing to have to yeah. deal with. So I, I genuinely didn't know that we weren't allowed to let them go off. And they were all <laughs> sort of 15 years old. And the problem was... I've I've previously worked at a uh, a language camp actually in England in Worcester where I'm from. Right. And I would take routinely groups of 30 kids who were under the age of 14 to London for a day trip and mm-hmm. part of it was that they get 5 hours in London by themselves. And so <laughs> as far as I was concerned that was okay and so I didn't know anything to the contrary and on the first time I took kids to downtown Boston uh, I just said all right you know We'll go to this shopping mall and we'll have an hour here and then we'll meet back here at this time and then we'll go to the next place and do the same thing. And mm. so, yeah, I actually did let them go off. But, yeah, you're right. Mm. We weren't supposed to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's different in, like, we'll say, if we went to the mall on a Friday evening. That was very different, you know, because it was essentially in the one enclosed mall. Like, you'd be walking around and you'd still see the kids almost everywhere anyway. You know, so that was definitely different. Um, but some of the other big trips on the Saturday, like, there was Six Flags which is an amusement park. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so like Alton <clears throat> Towers in England, for example. Yeah, full-on amusement park. Um, Roller coasters. Most people in North America listening should know. Um, water Country, again, amusement park, but a water park. <laughs> water amusement park. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Um, and like these are day-long ones, you know, for Six Flags especially, you're leaving at 7 o'clock in the morning. Yes. Whereas on the weekend, the kids aren't getting up, they don't have to be up for brunch till 11. So you're committing to this. It's a hell of a long day, but it's it's an amusement park for the day. Well, do you remember? <laughs> do you remember there was one week uh, I didn't go on it, thank God. Like I did something else uh, where they get up at six in the morning on a Saturday after a f- after five days of getting up at seven in the morning, going to sports and stuff, and they drove for however many hours it was to go to Six Flags, and because of weather, it was closed. Yeah. And so they, do you remember that? And so they sat on a bus for I think <clears throat> a total of seven hours, like there and back. Mm-hmm. And um, didn't do anything that day. And the other group, which I think that was when I went down to downtown Boston, like we had a good day right. and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So that was a real shame for those kids because Six Flags was expensive as well and there were no refunds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that did suck, right? Do you know um, one that you have forgotten? 
I might just mightn't have gone to it, but go ahead. Oh, no, go on. I'm sorry. You no, I was going to mention the whale watching next. Oh, okay, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. the, only reason I, the only reason I'm really keen to mention that is because uh, that was one of my highlights of the whole like six months of traveling. So including South America and the US, the whale watch was unbelievable. I was there. I was actually the lead, the head counselor. Have we mentioned that we did that for... for um, for excursions, that there was one council that was nominated as the lead. Um, Yeah, so there was one in charge, essentially, of the whole thing. And I was often, especially my third year, I was often the lead councillor because I'd done all the trips before. And, um, yeah, you have to make sure everything runs smoothly. You're the kind of contact person wherever you're going, you know, that kind of thing. And and you're, at the end of the day, the book's going to stop with you if something goes wrong. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I I was head councillor for a lot of those. I think that was just because I was the oldest, usually, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. a lot and of in the, fairness, you only lost two kids that day, so. Yeah, no, that. <laughs> I am joking. Yeah, the whale Legal reasons. reasons I right. am joking. <laughs> no, no. Um, we did. We only took. We. I think it were four councillors, and there were only seventeen kids, so it was a really easy thing. And we were on a boat. There's nowhere for them to go. I mean, except overboard. But you'd hope they wouldn't do that. <laughs> but there was nowhere for them to go, so it was a really easy one. So you actually could. Uh, much more just sit back and enjoy what you were doing and the trip was mm-hmm. fantastic i mean i said the hardest bit of that day was getting people from the bus onto the boat like yes. realistically and then yes. and then from the boat back to the bus because we have to get <laughs> tickets we have to go out like me my, as the head council i had to go and get the tickets whilst the other councillors got these kids off the bus and make sure they don't go anywhere and and so that is the most hectic part of it but even that's not not too bad you know as long as you've got a good team with you um mm-hmm. yeah but yeah, the trip itself was just incredible. Like it was 90 minutes out from Boston, from the port. So, you know, you could sort of see the skyline of the city anyway, which is really cool. 90 minutes out into the Atlantic, up towards uh, Cape Cod. And they ha- just had these humpback whales. So the boat itself was actually a research boat. And they just take people out as a way of making money on top of it and pay- helping to pay for research. But uh, they went to a spot where they know there were loads of humpback whales. And the whales happened to be feeding uh, it's not like one of these things that you see when you go shark diving in some places where they throw meat in the water to lure the sharks. These whales were, they had trapped them down by radar where the whales were already feeding and we could just drive over to them. And it was just, it was just so cool. Like these things were so close to the boat. I can't even describe it. Like, and they were coming all the way out of the water while they were feeding with their mouths open and they go down and smash their tails on the wa- on the surface like you see in films and stuff. It was really, really cool. What like to say one of my top five things I did of the whole six months of travelling. Hmm. That's cool. That's cool. I think <clears throat> yeah, I, I did that once as well. We were a little bit less lucky because we didn't see anywhere near as many. I think we saw one, you know, go all the way up in the air and back down again and then we saw a couple of tails of other ones. Oh wow! Yeah. No, we had like double digits of wow. everything. Like it was really, it was, it, I yes, yeah, apparently lucky. You know, it's really good turnout. Of course, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Were there any uh, other excursions? Have we have we got that? <laughs> Not that I can think of, really. You know. Um, uh, oh, I mentioned actually the New England Revolution. Uh, that was yeah, one sorry, one, yeah, right? there's New England Revolution, which is the MLS, the um, professional soccer team they have in and around New England and around Boston couple of trips to those during the camp um you'd normally because it's the weekend you wouldn't have too many going anyways so you might have three or four staff and like 25 to 30 kids at most so it's a little bit more relaxed on the bus you know it wasn't as hectic when you got there because you not as many kids as you're normally used to looking after and there was a few more like the ratio for staff to kids was normally a bit better yeah so um <clears throat> yeah, I, i've been to quite a few of those <laughs> Were there any other excursions that you can think of? <laughs> I really don't think so. Um, you know, like there's a few movies, you know, as you mentioned earlier, there's one once or twice where you'd rent out a screen and have a movie. If the if the night was dry and warm enough, you'd have a movie outdoors. Um, that'd be on the weekend when there's not as many people, you know, so everyone could fit on the grass comfortably and watch it. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it, I think, excursion-wise. That's it, guys. That was our... Uh, Whatever half hour or so talking about our excursions, uh, you know, James said at the top of the podcast, it's one of the most, it's one of the best things that we did during the, during the summer, um, you know, going on these little things during the evenings and on weekends and stuff uh, really helped ease a lot of the, I won't say pressure, but, you know, some of the days were incredibly busy, 
and then you'd always these things to look forward to which is great so um yeah that's it with this this was episode six we have another few lined up ready to go but we're at the minute we're only going to release them weekly but check out our youtube channel it's the foley and james podcast channel which is more than likely where you're listening to this right now but uh hopefully in a couple of months we'll be up on a podcast format and uh, you'll be listening to it on that so myself and james are both on twitter and facebook um, you'll probably have one of us on one of those. But uh, I'm on Twitter, at OCR Cove. James is at Tweet Belsey. I'm also on Instagram, at the same, OCR Cove. And I'm on Snapchat, at Crazy Axel. Um, so like, subscribe, share. If you see us on Twitter, you know, give us a retweet. Um, comment as well, guys. You know, we're always looking for feedback. What's what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. Uh, mostly the right stuff. You know, people don't like to hear the criticism of themselves but we'll take it on board anything that you guys have to say and um we're also looking for topics for future podcasts you know we have a couple lined up obviously ourselves but we're open to talk about almost anything yeah so um unless james has anything to add to that no that's good excellent okay guys catch you next time bye bye